All right. I hope you're all doing good. We're gonna we're gonna scuttle through some of this. I guess scuttle's a word. I don't know. We're not gonna really study this. This is like a. I'm gonna show you some stuff. Ah, uh, some of it you've seen. I, I I'm I'm sure. Anthony Johnson, an African captive. Uh, I, I don't believe that at all. Became a landowner and slave owner. So that first sentence goes against everything that they taught in public schools. And when we go further, he was an, a slave owner in colonial Virginia. So that then determines that there are black colonists or Negro colonists or dark skinned colonists. Now, Africans in colonial America held very little social or political power. Their contributions not only supported the Southern colonies, but led to the eventual blah, 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 blah. Well, what does it say? White slavery in the South. See, because this claimed that blacks didn't really have any power if they were free. But you can see this dude's a landowner and he holds a lot of slaves. We've, we've looked at Anthony Johnson. We know that he held a lot of slaves. So Africans, their contributions only supported the South. Now, what's happening in the South? White people were enslaved in the United States. The term white slavery used in the 19th and 20th centuries to refer to sexual exploitation. Now, you already know the white race has been around since the 1600s. It's not until the 19th century that the slaves that are considered the caucus are classified as white. Meaning, who was white before that? If you're under the belief Columbus is white, white settlers, white, white, I mean, white colonists, that's insane. Negro Portuguese, Negro Spanish, Negro German. Now, so like gelatin or gelatin, pal 18 German is Negro. Okay, so when we sit there and say the black people that lived in Europe, they existed. They're on all these crests and stuff like that. You can't be some poor person and get your face on the crest. You have to be high society or nobility. So again, we're asking for information about hidden stuff, which they're not really going to show us. It, it defeats what they're doing now. So again, when you sit there and say the Palatine War, to find out about the Palatine War, you have to study uh, Benjamin. So Benjamin Franklin said, why should the Palatine Boers be suffered to swarm into our settlements by the herding together established their language and manners to the exclusion of ours. They talk a different way, they look a different way, they act a different way. Why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us? So we thought that the white person was the original German and he telling us that they will Germanize them instead of us anglifying them. Now we already know who call themselves the Anglos and are not. Today they call themselves the Germans, but last year they were Slavics. And we'll never adopt our language, our customs, or more than they can acquire our complexion. So, Everybody can see on this page what Benjamin Franklin looks like. So to sit there and say, Benjamin Franklin is considered caucus, and he's arguing about the German's complexion. If I type in German right now, what is he going to show you? What complexion? Mm -hmm. German. So if I say images, I'll probably have to put the word people. 
Tov. Japheth will dwell in the tents of Shem. So whoever the Ori decide, whether by his own or by them, whether by contract or by force, and these people replace them, telling the whole world, we are the chairman. Yet their complexion is exactly the same as the portraits of Benjamin Franklin. So what could he be talking about in this? Unless he's talking about black Germans, the originals, which would then lead to black Spanish. So from my understanding, this is a black Spaniard. Okay. <clears throat> you sit there and you say, well, tell me about the Esposito. Surname origin from Latin word ex, ex potus, which means exposed. Okay. Yeah, he's on TV. The, the last name fits. He's exposed to the world. Right? The surname is from Naples, which is what? Italy? So, some people have seen what, since we're going to bring up Italy, we might as well do this one Um, when we sit here. So, Kobe Bryant and the Italian language. Lakers Kobe Bryant speaks fluent Italian. So, there's videos, they tell you Kobe Bryant speaks better Italian than an Italian. It is cold. So he speaks such good Italian. They say, is he from Italy? And of course, right? He was born in Philadelphia, partly raised in Italy. So you would ask, why? What is so pr uh, important about the Bryant last name that, again, if you're in the condition I am in, you don't have the money to travel the world. But if you're a black skin ruler, or if you're a black skin person that is not being ruled over by all these other groups of Psalm 83, then the world's your oyster, right? Well, let's find where Bryant is from. Bryant comes from Bryant is a Celtic name. So again, you want me to believe a world traveler who became an NBA star, right? Became, uh, again, this just seems ridiculous. You want me to believe that his name is from Celtic, and obviously he went through slavery, and he got this name from slavery, right? And then this gets into who are the Normans. Brenton people with the name Bryant, Brenton, uh, are among the Normans who invaded England in 1066. So you should see here, Anthony Johnson, let's go back to Anthony Johnson. He's classified as a colonist. What the fuck? You just told me he's a slave that got freed and then owned land and then owned slaves. See, again, if you're enslaved, you ain't got no money. How are you going to earn enough to, to buy land? That's why... I don't believe, a, and there he is, Portuguese. So the Johnson name from him is Portuguese. See, this is what I mean. If all this information is running to and fro and ain't nobody chasing it, then don't nobody want the truth. So the Most High says, I'm going to destroy you all for not worshiping me. Uh, two-thirds of my Judeans and Israelites are just gone. So, could the one-third be alive? Because if so, who is the one-third? It can't be that many people in America because they don't study, they don't know shit. They use, but you don't hear nobody using the name of the Most High like it's taught in this book. You see every fake religion saying, Moses brought the law. Moses brought the name of the Most High too. Are they using it? No. So.
So this is the land of liars. It, sh it should be painfully obvious. The land of liars. Okay? Now, when you sit here and realize he's Portuguese, and this cat is Spanish, right? Let me get back to him. Did I take him off? Oh, no. So this guy is what the Spanish look like, the real Spanish. And then we don't get the real And then this guy is known to speak Italian so good, we might as well just say he is Italian. And then this guy, who we started studying, it turns out he was born in Portuguese roughly around so again here you have him born in 1600 and then died in 1670 all right he's classified as a farmer but this is uh, a slave owner why would he be classified as a farmer you understand what's going on here they're they're hmm Gaslight! So they're gaslighting how his achievements. He's just a colonist farmer, right? But he's actually one of the great or And see again, is that sound Portuguese enough? Does that sound Spanish enough? Does that sound uh, Italian enough? It's not Anthony, it's Antonio. Yonsin, or Yeoman. Yeoman Johnson is Johnson Johnson, Johnson and Johnson. They put it in our face all the time. You've watched Star Trek, the guy that beams down that always dies. Huh? You, you watched Boomerang, and Eddie Murphy explained what Yeoman Johnson is. It's the guy that beams down, the guy whose face you've never seen before on Star Trek. Okay? And when he beams down with the rest of the crew who you're familiar with seeing, when the alien shoots somebody, it's always the guy you've never seen. That's always Yeoman Johnson. They could send five Yeoman Johnsons down. <clears throat> An African-American man. How is he African if he's born in Portugal? Don't you notice that all people of color, no matter where they are in the world, all of a sudden, they're from Africa! It, it, it becomes, becomes ridiculous, right? Oh, he was indentured in Maryland who amassed sizable land holdings. He's just a slave, right? And had indentured service and enslaved people in the 1600s. So this is where it gets, it, it gets sad because this is being done to our people by people that look exactly like us. That's the whole thing all the books see me and you were being taught that racism is white people holding black people back that's not what racism is for us we are a specific black race <clears throat> yeah no we're a specific race who's who happens to be of afro heritage. There are other races of Afro heritage too. They are working against us. It should be painfully obvious. But if you don't want to see it, nobody can force your eyes. Nobody can. I'm not going to worry about it. So when we scroll down, we're going to find out uh, that he owned black people and he owned white people. All right. And here it says. Uh, in Indian massacre of AIDS. Okay, so. So here they're going to argue. Uh, he owned 250 acres. And the service of five indentured service. Four of those indentured servants are Caucasian. One of them is Negro like him. So the idea that white slaves didn't exist is utterly ridiculous. The idea that 
the white people were the slaves mas master are is utterly fucking ridiculous. The idea that they're given permission to oppress us because their hands have to look dirty and not the true rulers. That's it's reasonable versus what we're seeing. Okay. I, I you can think what you want. But remember, you were taught by them. I just played a video where he says they're all liars. Anybody that says they're not a liar is a goddamn liar. So I was trying to find the Inglesia dude from Georgia, but it gave us instead the Portuguese slave trade in early modern Japan. Modern Japan is now, people. Early modern Japan is 1800, 1900s. So that's the black Portuguese going over to Japan and enslaving people. All this is here for us. If you're sitting there, I know everything about the Diddy case, you're a fucking idiot. You shouldn't know who that person slept with. It's none of your business. It's none of your concern. It's just gossip. These people actually own you and pretend they don't. So here you have the Negro Second Continental Congress. There's the First Continental Congress too, it's full of Negroes, but might as well just go with the second one first, right? 1755, right? 1776. There's fucking Negroes in this shit. Don't you find Congress to be a problem to have Negroes in it? During a time Negroes are supposed to be enslaved, not supposed to be free till 1866. If Benjamin Franklin is saying we are the only white people here in Pennsylvania, then again, that's not white supremacy over the world, not even over the nation. That's a batch of people living in one particular area. How do we get so many? So many intermixing. Now. You have to start asking. Specific questions about the realities. If Spain is black, if Portugal is black, if Italy is black, then George Washington is from France. And the original France came over and they started intermingling with the Indians. And then white France came over and started moving everybody around by force. So we are led to believe. So is George Washington black or white? If the original French that are coming over at that time are black. Now, if they're all related to the same ancestor and black Europeans were there at that time, then what do you think John Lackland, no land, John Lack's land, Plantagenet. Plantagenet is a huh? whore name. Plantagenet, that prostitute so seldom bore children because, oh, 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 horrid. Oh, 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 horrid. And the house of Plantagenet was created from, hmm, oh, 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 horrid. Hmm. Planted in net that prostitutes who seldom bore children because <laughs> needed to keep that income flowing in. <laughs> How do you build kings? How do you build a house off whoredom? <laughs> oh, and the Babylon, they can't keep those legs taped together. <laughs> African American slave owners. And again, this is you should be enslaved, not owning slaves, right? This is what they're teaching you, right? 
again this doesn't or order for payment of march 1818 from the mayor of new orleans to reimburse reimburse miss rosette something or another a free color person for labor of her mulatto slave so she slept with her white slave probably slept with her white slave produced a mulatto child and then sent the child to work and made money off the child that's your basic slavery african-american owners in the history of the united states existed in some cities and in, and others as plantation owners in the country you wouldn't even think black people own plantations the way they talk about black people during this time ownership of slaves signified both wealth and increased social status now you wouldn't think about that based on what it said oh earlier earlier it's like oh well oh well, well africans in colonial mill uh, held very little social power so national geographic is a fucking liar now here we have wikipedia with nobody want to trust but he tell you right here, during this time, ownership of slaves signified both wealth and increased social status. Boy, that sentence alone make UBTV's videos, it helps it make a lot of sense watching him tell us how black people used to get their kicks off beating the blood out of Negroes. Oh, wow. Huh? The original practice precedes the time of slavery in the United States. The African slave trade, inhabitants of Africa practiced very various forms of slavery since late antiquity. So, if you're not understanding what's going on right now, I'm gonna tell you the secret. UBTV seemed to know what's going on. He showed how the Senegalese, which are Africans from the river Senegal, Senesherib, their king, they came over and started infesting the islands and sleeping with the what? The Arawak Indians and made this new class of Negro. Now you need to take a black African and you need to, to sleep with to have them sleep intermix with an Asian and then you'll make us. That's why the Africans don't have long hair. That's why the males don't. Right? You hear you be say Fulani Nani. That's the Fulani, the Assyrian. Have you seen uh what's his name? Daylight. And his set list is called Assyrian, but it's spelled funny. So the Assyrian African Negroes from Senegal, whom we call the Senegalese, they picked up and started bringing us over. That's the African slave trade. That's what the Bible say. The Assyrians moved the Israelites. The Assyrians moved the Judea. Dude, this happened fucking hundreds of years ago. This didn't happen thousands of years ago. I'll keep saying this and then they'll just keep attacking me. Nothing will change in anybody's life. You gotta love it. So here they're saying, accordingly, black slave became slave owners. Doesn't they say black slaves? They say, accordingly, black slave became slave owners of slaves and re relatively common in the United States in 1850. Negroes are enslaved at that time. Africans are not. Africans enslaved us. Black Europeans enslaved us. Both groups brought us to the Americas. The ones that defeated the Indians, some of them got their land taken back from the United States. We got to understand what's going on. The United States are buying the slaves from the slave masters. That means the United States going broke and all the slave masters getting richer. So the United States goes broke, and guess who's got enough money to group together and buy a brand new country? See, the United States is a sad story. It's a slave continent. 
the nobility of other lands came here and enslaved everybody. And those Indians joined with them, and that's what makes up Psalms 83. The Bible's not old. It's not. We're being taught that because we'll listen to anything they say. In the time of slavery, when presumably all black people are being enslaved, you have HBCUs, black colleges. Now, don't you find the belief of white supremacy rather odd when you sit there and say, Trailer Park. If it's pull your boots, bootstraps up, wouldn't they all be pulled up? Why would you have Trailer Park? That's almost like you got Caucasians that are blacklisted from, from doing major business in this society. Hell, it's almost like they're, they're blacklisted from doing minor business in this society. It's almost like they didn't want to go along with the plan, so they've been excluded and set in these boxes at the bottom of mountains, out of everybody's sight or behind fences. But with that being said, isn't it odd, with white supremacy, you get so many HBCUs. And then we have to start asking about the oldest HBCU. Yeah, because that becomes... That becomes a major question. Chenye University of Pennsylvania, where all those fucking white people were? All those Anglos? So this is a Germanic university? This is what Franklin was complaining about. How are they going to get along with us? How are they going to exist with us with their different mannerisms, their different customs, their different language? They're different complexion! And then you have 1837. We are enslaved for 29 more years. That's got nothing to do with us. That's got to do with descendants of Anthony Johnson and these other Europeans that came over who were never enslaved but enslave us. Now you have all these black colleges. This is older. Hmm? 1837, 1937. Let's see. It's 2024. In seven more years, it will be a 200-year-old college. That doesn't sound right under the belief of white supremacy. It doesn't. Okay. What are the, <coughs> the ten oldest? It doesn't matter because none older than this. In seven years, this has its two hundred. Uh, right. Harris Stowe. These are black names. Don't get crazy. So Lincoln, the mulatto, is black name too. Chain Ye, well, Dick Cheney. It's not spelled that way. But again, did they own the Chain A family? Le Moyne, right? So again, the black man that they want to call a Haitian that come up speaking French that create Chicago. Now I'm gonna tell you, most of these black people that you see running shit in Virginia, if they light skinned like me, they most likely used to be white and they slept themselves black. Just like Delegate Eleanor Horton or whatever her name is. So they're just playing a game on us. Okay? HBCU graduate employment statistics. This got kind of crazy because they say, oh, only 35 of these people be graduating. Oh, 35% of these people be graduating. Well, you got, and then you got to start asking. How many? 
for you to say only 35% of most of them, again, some are private, so they can't have those numbers, okay? 107 HBCUs in America. How many HW <laughs> college? There's no such thing. We want to act like Harvard and, and this and that, but those are what? Ivy League, Roman League schools. So we're not being, so who is the, the, the Roman is the Italian and Edom, the Negro, the black German. The Northern black African and some intermixed races that are mentioned in Psalms 83. We have this all wrong. Edom breaks into tribes and the tribes are named. Assyria is named as a whole. All these people are against us. They want us destroyed because of what the Most High promises. So we start going to the HBCUs and Richard Humphreys, he seems to have created one of the HBCUs. And so we start looking up some information about Richard Humphreys and what he looked like and everything. And he's the one that created Chain A, and this is him right here. He is a Negro that created the oldest black HBCU. Well, of course, right? But here we go. He was an American silversmith. Um, ain't no fucking slave dealing with silver. I don't care the level of skill. The idea that he could pocket silver, like, you know, those scraps will add up to something. No, there's no freaking way. And he's a philanthropist, right? So he's, from the 1700s to the 1800s, he was our Bill Gates. Again, if you think Bill Gates is it actually anybody, then I, I, I would say he's a hood ornament. Just a hood ornament. See, once you start saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to drop stuff from the sky, he's allegedly just some average guy. He doesn't hold a title other than the head of a corporation. And corporations can be bought out by what? The investors? Mm -hmm. If you think Black Rock's running things, why would white people name themselves Black Rock? It's the hidden black hand. It always is. And this is what I was watching, and they showed some of these uh, fucking. Showed some of these. You see this bad haircut shit? Once, okay, so once you start owning a team and you see what's on TV, you see what's on uh, celebrities, you see all these people buy the expensive stuff because of the celebrities, just like us. But when you start seeing them with bad haircuts, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? You really want me to believe that this fucking Play-Doh doll owns some shit. With no style, no fucking grace. Everybody in this land fake shit. You mean he looked like that and he don't shave his head bald. He don't uh, try to give himself a Trump style, uh, nothing like that. He go with the fucking bowl monk cunt, like, like somebody put a bowl on his head and cut along the edge of a fucking plastic bowl. You can't sit there and say, this Oakland, California, you can't say you watching bitches in bikinis all the time, right? Uh, fucking surf world, all that shit, Lamborghinis and fucking Porsches, and this is the hairstyle you roll out the house with? 
making people believe that you're a fucking owner of a fucking sports team. You 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 got the wrong guy to believe that. Like it 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 then shows me these guys all of them are most likely food ornaments. That means they are placed in position and told to keep a good record for them, their personal record, stay out of trouble, and don't mess up the money for the organization. Because in, in reality, it's an organization. So, again, Jacksonville Jaguars. And just, just, just try it out. And we'll say, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, right? Okay, see, right here, look. They say, Khan is the sole owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He bought the team from Wayne Weaver and his partners. So, let us look up Khan, and then we'll say, does he have partners? You might not. It's just a, a curiosity, including his son Tony Khan and four seasons. So he had several business partners. He doesn't own it. He's the fucking hood ornament. He doesn't. He could be on paper as sole control, but it's not true. It's just not true. You can sit there and say, oh, he had enough money to buy it. Or, well, he still needs a management team to run it. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about other businessmen who actually own it. You want me to believe some guy from Pakistan who we went in and we destroyed their whole nation. He's a billionaire business and sports tycoon. I don't know. I mean... With that kind of money, he has the ability to build up, a, a, you know, one twentieth of Pakistan. But instead, he's like, I'm going to go. Yeah, this is all I think. In my opinion. I think this is a lie. I think if you investigate any of these people, you're going to find there is some group that's behind these football teams. That's my opinion. Now, originally, Richard Humphreys called his shit the African Institute. Now, imagine uh, African slave trade, and he's going to promote, ah, this is African property, right? The property of them that did, did this to us. Originally called the African Institute, was renamed for the Institute for Colored Youth, and eventually became Shanai, Shanai University, the oldest historically black university in the United States. Request. Humphreys was a Quaker. So you, you see like the Quakers and they show you these white people. Now you fucking know it's a lie. You cannot say this is the Im image of Humphreys right here and then say he's a fucking Quaker and then turn around and show me some saggy hair motherfuckers trying to say, oh yeah, Scooby can do man scooby can do you see here's the lie it's in the crayon images so if we go and study george fox and where's george fox from and all that shit he's gonna be from europe right uh, uh mid 17th century England. Isn't that funny? Like, they're giving you the Quakers, they're not going to tell you about him. Now, this picture looked darker than the last picture they had, didn't it? So, yeah, man, it's it, these are the protestants, they allegedly overthrew the Catholics, right? 
Religious Society of Friends. All right. Keep this in mind because this is a Quaker and this is the image of that Quaker right here. This Quaker who's supposed to be from Europe is forming schools naming the shit Africa. Does anybody have a problem with that? Logically, that doesn't make sense. This should be fucking Institute for Colored European Youth. Why would he name the shit about some African race shit? He's a Quaker from Europe. He's not from Africa. If we read about him, we should find out if he's ever been. Right? So he changed his will 1829 after race riots occurred in Philadelphia. The since and the Cincinnati riots. So, if we get to the bottom of this, they'll tell us this up front. Oh, the Cincinnati riots were triggered by the competition for jobs between Irish and immigrants and black natives and former slaves. Oh, so the slave master children want a job, the slaves want a job, and then the white people being brought over that are intermixed, that's the Irish, intermixed, they want a job, right? But Ohio, but also were related uh, related to, to white fears given to the rapid increase of free and fugitive slaves. And, no, 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 no. That gave to black fears of white this and that. See, we don't, we, don't even worry about that. It's, it's coming. It's coming. I'm going to tell you all about it. Let's scroll down. A second bequest of $10,000 for the purpose of founding an institution for the education of the descendants of the African race. See, it's like it's like Umar read this shit and just keep on saying this shit. And then he got 10 grand and he realized, oh, I can't do this shit today with 10 grand. I got to keep going. And so yeah, he left small legacies to shelter for colored orphans and to three city dispensaries. Okay. British Virgin Islands. He was born on Tortola. Okay. In the British Virgin Islands in 1750, Sarah Lake and Thomas Humphrey married in 1774, had five children. Richard was the fourth. Sally and Thomas were wealthy slave owners. They were members of high society, owning and profiting off enslaved Negroes. Stop saying enslaved Africans. You ain't enslaved no Africans. You enslaved Negroes. See, that's the whole point. See, they got all the money. They got the original gold. You, you understand? It's like Monopoly. They got the gold nugget over here. In the play in the USA, they got to transfer the gold nugget in the cash, and then they start spending the cash. Now, these YouTubers that do these fucking hand signs and shit like that, they are getting paid by these people to push the spotlight away from them. Keep the light off the black hand. It's okay because they let all the shit from the 1700s be released. Soon they'll let the 1800s, soon they'll let our time, our modern time be released and we'll know exactly who they are. Richard was the fourth born to his slave owning mama and daddy. They was high society. You understand? This is big. They didn't try to hide this. They didn't say he was born a slave and ooh, after his comeuppance, he did good and bought land and all this shit. No, 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 no. They telling you straight off the back, this nigga was born to fucking slave owners. He don't look mixed. So that means it was black people owning black people and owning white people. Not the other way around. Stop falling for the lies. Your enemy shoot lies out his mouth like a like an archer shoot arrows, and you accept everything this fucker say. Everything he says, you accept it. It's Christmas time. We're not supposed to be worshiping that, but here's a gift. Oh, shit. 
Oh shit. All these little faggots around here say they they Christians. The black ones and the white ones. They all got Halloween shit out. They all got uh, elaborate. We in a fucking poor neighborhood and they got elaborate Halloween decorations. It's like when you drive down the street blasting some shit out his 15s. I always say, well, I hope the children are fed. That you need to spend hundreds, of, even thousands of dollars on a fucking system for your car. Owning and profiting from enslaved Negroes, not Africans. We didn't come from Africa. Humphreys was one of a number of highly successful individuals who came from the Quaker congregation. Do you understand? That means the Quakers were enslavers. That means the Quakers were not white, they were black. That means somebody's in control of your school books, in control of your literature, and through racist acts, they want you to believe one race was doing this to you when it was not. The race that was doing this to you look just like you. You look different because you mix with Asian. Exactly what Abraham said, don't do that. So what they do? They started the Asian slave trade, the Arab slave trade, the African slave trade, the Portuguese slave trade, the Dutch slave trade. Are you starting to see what's going on? All the modern nations were part of the slave trade. That's how you got there. That's how I got there. See, your family's obituaries are more valuable than any records they have. Your family's obituaries, your family knew exactly what was going on. It was being done to them. They knew exactly what was going on. They told you in your obituaries. They told you in your family reunions. In memory of those ancestors who now stand, oh, excuse me, the memory of those who now stand with the ancestors. You see, having this written in this book show you that one of my ancestors was pagan as fuck. Wrote some Orishi shit in here. No one dead can help us. We're almost at a point. No one alive can help us. We can only help ourselves. We can only fend for ourselves. We can only uphold justice. You just saw them cut. This is the most highest judgment on America. You just saw them cut off their own people in those mountains because they want the resources. Nobody's coming to save them. Pray for us! No. I'm not praying against God to God. I'm not praying to God against what God's doing. They already told you the government cannot start a storm. They can add to the air to try to move the storm. That's all they can do. The most high said, I will be like a cyclone to you. That's a tornado. That's a dust devil. And that's a hurricane. And that's Twister. And they have all these different names for the exact same thing. The vacuum that comes and cleans up and destroys. Takes from one area. Sucks up all the bacteria that it can. Drops it off in another area. And magically, all the little things that were weightless gets contaminated with it. And then all the sharp things come at you and cut your skin. And each thing was contaminated. And so now you get new diseases, new outbreaks. But it's all the most high. Because he said what his will was going to be. But we won't read. Your second generation 
freed from slavery, Henry Williams, Delia, Delia Williams, Walter Williams, and that is where I stem from, Cleveland Williams, Everlina Williams, Addie Williams, Ola Williams, Charlie and Rebecca Williams, grandchildren by each child, third generation. And then, of course, the fourth generation would be my father, and I am the fifth generation out of Mississippi. Yes, that means the person that you're married to, if they're successful, they very well could be your oppressor. Yes, that means the black man that you respect, that you believe has a good job because he earned it. He probably didn't earn it. There's a chance he was given that job. This was the whole point of affirmative action to put the slave master's children in positions that other people earn. Not to put me and you in those positions. So we have to stop listening to them. They won't tell us the truth. They have goals to hide because they're thriving off of everyone's labor, not just ours. Now again, Helen Plain, or Caroline Helen Jemson Plain, is a very famous person. Most people don't know her today because of white supremacy. She was the charter member of the United Daughters of the Confederacy and the president of the Atlanta chapter. Now, I didn't study this. Vincent sent this, sent this over to me, all right? And so as I was looking at this, it becomes very evident what's going on. Now, here in this article, this is the, the paragraph we want. Now, let's just read it. I was going to highlight it and scroll up. Let's read it. Since seeing this wonderful and beautiful picture of reconstruction in the South, what happened to people in the South? Well, Helen Plain is white. So being white in the South, she was sexually exploited like the rest of her people. Now, the men were sent into the mines. The men were sent into the quarries the caucus men, the white men, and the women were sexually exploited. This is why nobody has any problem with seeing white women on screen with bathing suits or less. This is why. Now, this is why they put white people in these images and not black people because black people have a problem with being sexually exploited. If you live, there was a man, this is this is kind of foul. The dude was talking about the different races of women. He's arguing against a black woman. He said, if you take this woman, she'll do this for you. If you take this woman, she'll do this woman. He said, if you take the white woman, she'll even your friend to try to make you happy. Now, me being a selfish piece of shit, I don't see how that makes anybody happy. But this is what the guy said, all right? We just watched a video where the white lady was dating a black dude. He moved into the neighborhood and she effed him and she effed his friend. And then she went and said, oh, they, they did, they, 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 they essayed me. We saw that. So this ain't nothing new. I feel it is due to the Ku Klux Klan, which saved us from Negro domination and carpet bag rule. So we know what Negro domination is. We're studying black people ruling over Negroes. So what is carpet bag rule? Carpet bag rule is a carpet bagger. It is a largely historical pejorative used by so some Southern 
or Southerners to describe alleged, allegedly opportunist, opportunistic or disruptive Northerners who came to the South to do what? Because that's what you what you got going on. What they do? They came to the South and what? They came to the Southern states after the Civil War and were perceived to be exploiting the local populace for their own financial, political, or social gain. Well, didn't they make a bunch of red summer? Didn't they make a bunch of black people move to the north? Aren't we all exploited? Didn't they let in immigrants? Listen, God damn it. Didn't you get fucking tired of being exploited? Didn't most of you fucking stop working? Didn't they invite a bunch of immigrants to keep the economy afloat? You don't realize why they invited the immigrants? You won't work. So... To, to have a capitalist society, you have to have slaves. Excuse me, you have to have employees. But you can't have a capitalist society. You can't have a thriving society if you're not feeding off of somebody. See, this is what we don't truly understand because no one's taught us no one will teach us this in this land because it goes against this land. So, let it be immortalized on Stone Mountain. Why not represent a small group of them in their nightly uniform approaching in the distance? Okay, so people, you have to ask, what is this article about? The connection between the United Daughters of the Confederacy. You understand? They were born from the United States. They were born, let's say, what it says, white slavery is correct. And they didn't have condoms back then. So, again, they're just popping seed everywhere. So, they're popping out babies. So, imagine... In this type of society where they're using mulattoes and white children or white women for sexual exploitation, well, doesn't this title make sense? The United Daughters of the Confederacy? The Confederacy made them. All these tribes of America being confederate with each other one way or the other, it created this. Now, the KKK. That's a whole different thing for us because we don't understand the KKK because we're under the belief they were destroying us. Uh, the movie Birth of the Nation, a s epic silent film about the Civil War, reconstruction in the... So again, if this movie is really about the Civil War, I think I want to see it now. I think I want to see a birth of a nation. Again, because this doesn't truly make sense. Was released and quickly became a national commercial success. The film, which is considered one of America's first blockbuster movies, depicted the KKK as heroes of Reconstruction and protectors of Southern white women's chastity. See, that does not make sense unless <laughs> all I'm doing is endangering myself by broadcasting this shit. Right? If white people still kill black people today, but those black people are poor, are they doing it because the black hand has control over them? Or does the black hand order them to do this? Or are they just doing it on their own. Does the hillbilly not understand the difference between the black owner and the black slave? 
do these are questions that come to mind because there's no no way to answer what's in somebody's head even if you're sitting across from them they can tell you whatever they want their fucking mind can change five minutes later you never know so this becomes somewhat of a guessing game of why it continues today are they under the illusion of white supremacy or are they under the idea of carpetbag rule versus black domination so again not to be racist but the white man wants his own country but here's the problem he needs to understand you don't reproduce consistently everybody wants to reproduce the problem is nobody wants to take care of their reproduction so if you put the white man in an area by himself on some land by himself bro you're going to make yourself go extinct there's, there's no middle ground here you know so yeah again this these are heroes of white women's chastity now imagine now now see if i was a white man and i knew all this information i would be fucking offended by interracial mixing oh i would because you're still being in your mind you would think you're being dominated but now it's by charm I, i'm not sure if i you know i'm not sure how one would view this but it becomes viewable to me if they're fighting for chastity and the idea of intermixing is, is a problem to them right because of what happened in the past and it's hidden from us then no Enthusiastic white audiences viewed the film in sold out theaters throughout the country. In Atlanta, the movie enjoyed an unprecedented three week run at Atlanta at the Atlanta Theater. According to journalists, the film drew an audience of more than 35,000 people, about one fourth of the city's white population. So, so 35 times four, so you're looking at 100 and it's 5, 10, 15, 100, 15,000. Right? No, that can't be right, is it? 125,000? Fucking bad. Anyway, let's go forward. Doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> the amount of people that are there. What has happened still has happened. So here's the ticket stub for it. All right, so the success and wide distribution increased national interest in the post Civil War clan. In Atlanta, the film served as an inspiration and a guide for the leaders of two early 20th century Atlanta organizations with close connections to Stone Mountain, the modern Ku Klux Klan and the United Daughters of the Confederacy. No, 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 no. You're writing the modern, that's a lie. That's what they'll do. They will lie along the way. Again, the modern Klan is not fighting for the chastity of fucking white women. The modern clan who's been disassembled since 2015 and broke into alt-right groups are arguing for their white nation. Send them, send them up to Canada. This is what it's this is what it's about. So here they're just lying when it's they give the modern clan and again i'm not protecting them there's nothing i could say to protect anyone not even you the viewer i'm showing you because i'm at a mental position where i don't want to be on anyone's side or anyone's team because it's all bullshit. They're fighting over white and black. Well, goddamn, my skin's kind of golden. That's not my fight. They're fighting over ownership over the land versus 
uh, theft versus indigenous. Well, my families were raped. Uh, uh, that's nothing to do with me. So as I move on, we're at an hour. Uh, as we get to an hour and we start playing videos, it, it, it starts to corrupt everything. Now I'm going to play some videos. Next video, I'm going to play some stuff from UB. There's UB's new video. All right, so UB goes so in depth that I, I really have no interest in uh, trying to uh, deal with the whole of it. Uh, it's, it's, it's too much. I love it. I love it. I love it. But there are a few moments that come up that are so good that I couldn't resist writing down some notes. But I like that somebody else is saying it. So uh, can you please see about that? So I'd like to uh, I'd like to play him saying it because then you get someone else's voice saying it. Ooh. So somewhere in the 17 minute mark, he's going to show the Arawak people. And I don't really remember where it was, but when I saw the Arawak people, I said, it's interesting the image that they get. There it is right there. So when I see this image and I hear people tell me how they're indigenous and then I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm highly offended. Because it's like, come on, man, you didn't do any research. And again, I'm not talking about UB. I'm talking about people in general. I'm not talking about any name I'm going to bring up. This is just a generalized situation. Anybody with an Afro saying that they're indigenous. It, look, these people's skin is, it's black, black. It's very dark. If I go get a picture of my father, it's darker than my father. Their skin, now my grandfather, my dad's dad, his skin was jet black. Okay? So, no, we're not these people, man. They have straight hair. It doesn't matter how dark their skin is. So, UB's reading these definitions, and the definitions keep telling you they're dark skin, but they never mention Afros. They're, you know, sometimes they're called Negroes and this and that, but that's because the Africans came in and fucked them. The Senegalese. So, nah, man. I, 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 I'm not going to make more videos about we're not indigenous. If you believe that, then, then fucking gone with the wind. You know, that, that it becomes atrocious. How you look Negro, but you keep calling yourself an Indian? Obviously, uh, uh, two, two, two paints combining, you got more Negro paint than Indian paint, but you, but you keep on fucking saying the most idiotic shit and people look at you fucking crazy. All right, so at 22 minutes, look. 22 minutes, he says something that's, that was so off the wall, I had to record this part, you know, and, and again, this fits into what we're talking about. It's not really off the wall. It's against what we were taught in school. Color and whites classification started to become more rigid. On the island, enslaved blacks outnumbered free people of color and whites 10 to 1. Free people of color. You got black slaves, that's us. And then you got Free people of color who own us. Free Negro owners of slaves in the United States in 1830. We're enslaved till 1866, people. You got to understand the black slave owner that hides himself. This was a recipe for their demise. Here's a description of the racial climate at the time. 
quote from the French historian Paul Fregosi. Whites, mulattoes, and blacks loathed each other. Poor whites couldn't stand rich whites. The rich whites despised the poor whites. The middle class whites were jealous of the aristocratic whites. The whites born in France looked down upon the locally born white and rich white. Here's a description of the racial climate at the time. Quote from the French historian Paul Fregosi. Whites, mulattoes, and blacks loathed each other. Poor whites couldn't stand rich whites. So, the rich whites. Real quick. We're talking about from the 1400s to the 1800s, I believe. I'm not sure the time period he's talking about. This is colony, colonizing Haiti and turning it into a slave colony. So from his reading, there are poor whites, rich whites. Okay? So at this point, the people that have overthrown Europe have now taken on the skies. We're Italians, we're French, okay? Let's hear this again. I love this myself. This was a recipe for their demise. So history repeats itself. So to not have this during our generations, this is why all black people called each other brother and sister. This is your Freemasons controlling the lingo of society. If you don't talk like this, you're not cool. You're corny, or you're this, or you're that, or you're, again, man, this is how they get you. The description of the racial climate at the time. Quote from the French historian Paul Fregosi. Whites, mulattoes, and blacks loathed each other. Poor whites couldn't stand rich whites. The rich whites despised the poor whites. The middle class whites were jealous of the aristocratic whites. The whites born in France looked down upon the locally born whites. Mulattoes envied the whites, despised the blacks, and they were despised by the whites. Free Negroes brutalized those who were still slaves. Haitian born blacks. Free Negroes brutalized those who were still slaves. Now you gotta understand, being enslaved, you're somebody's property. So you're not out roaming the streets looking for people to hurt. Now, those black British Tories that, oh, they get food and clothing, all they gotta do is lift a couple of things, oh. Jealousy. So they would go around and hurt us, and then what did the rich white do? do? He tied those black people up to trees because their relationship with Britain not the slaves, the British Tories. See, this is what I didn't understand before. Were they hanging the slaves? Or were they hanging the slave master and the slave master's brother and the slave master's cousin for what the slave master done did to them? Would one slave master attack another slave because they're competition? So this tell you, black people been beating the shit out of you forever. Then rich whites, the rich whites despise the poor whites. The middle black people been beating the Hebrews mm, since Babylon. And then the slave trade, I mean the Assyrian captivity. Class whites were jealous of the aristocratic whites. The whites born in France looked down upon the locally born whites. Mulattoes envied the white. And you can see all their hair look bushy because they all intermixed. None of them are whole race anymore. Despised the blacks and they were despised by the whites. Free Negroes brutalized those who were still slaves. Haitian born blacks regarded those from Africa as savages. Everyone, quite rightly, lived in terror of everyone else. Haiti was hell. But you can start to see that happening here in America now. Negroes pass each other with this look on their face of, are you ready? You want some? I went to the store, I bought my shitty little cigarettes. Nigga looked out, he had his hands in his pocket. He was looking down, he was looking mad. Oh, I gave one of my cigarettes to the homeless guy out front. I saw that Negro, I looked at him, I said, how you doing, bro? He was like, oh shit, hey man, how you doing? 
But if I would have said, what the fuck you looking at? He's ready to go. I'm two feet taller than him. He wouldn't care. It is that time right here. And now what is Most High doing? Well, there seems to be some peoples that have advantages over the disadvantage. And the Most High sits on a throne endlessly. You tell me he's not bored. The Most High sits there, chooses who lives, who chooses who dies. Tell me he don't watch us like we are his fucking TV. The Most High is the God of War. There's no Mars God of War. That's, that's their talk. The Lord of Hosts. Look up the word host. It's armies. Does that mean the Most High just sits there and just chooses who he wants to have around him? He, he's picking from us. You know, it, look, this warrior dies. Warrior, you did good. You bring your ass up here. You playing it as a video game. Ugh. Warriors selected throughout time to fight as Soul Caliber. What the fuck? Soul Caliber bullets. This is his bullets. He is the leader of his army. Do you think the Most High got an army just to sit in heaven and watch us and say destroy yourselves and okay, all's good? No, he's going to lead them out and destroy. Who's he going to destroy? Everybody says, I'm too good to worship the Most High. And was rich. End quote. All right, so this next one, it's going to be at 24 minutes. This is going to be the last one. I, I didn't think I was going to do it. It's, it's working okay. So we'll Black, see. biracial, French, Spanish, British, and Polish participants with the ex-slave Toussaint Louverture emerging now, as Haiti's see, most prominent general. They keep showing you this goddamn picture with everybody painted white. He just read about all these white people that were there in the pictures that, they, that the Haitians produced. They don't even fucking show that many white people. This one does. But the one we just looked at, it didn't. So see here, you see the blue coats versus the blue coats versus what the and the slave. So everybody that's important is wearing a, a blue coat and white pants. So the blacks and the whites are on the same side versus the what? Versus the Negro. I mean. Yo, open your eyes, man. You know, I, yeah. So this is what's on screen for the words right now. Okay. The revolution was the only known slave uprising in human history that led to the founding of a state which was both free from slavery and ruled by non-whites and former captives. The successful revolution was a defining moment in the history of the Atlantic world, and the revolution's effects on the institution of slavery were felt throughout the Americas. This is true. Echoes of the Haitian massacre made their way to mainland America, where whites were in constant fear of slave rebellion. The end of French rule and the abolition of slavery in the former colony was followed by a successful defense of the freedoms the former slaves had won. And with the collaboration of already free people of color of their independence from white Europeans, end quote. So, yes, the Haitian Revolution is described as the first successful slave uprising. However, this made an enemy out of France and other colonial powers. So let me ask you a sincere question. Do you now see why they brought the Haitians into America? Who has the power to say, okay, everybody thinks it's white supremacy and we're going to plop these black people that don't speak the same language. We're going to plop them right in the middle of town. What do you think is going on? Is somebody trying to... You be did this video for a reason. Again, 
once you commercialize and you come right out and say this, car accidents happen. You fall downstairs. You don't get approved for this. You get pulled over. Suddenly, all the time. You go on a list. You get blackballed, like me. Remember, I've never monetized. I have videos, uh, 100,000 people viewed. Suddenly, I got put into a shoebox where only less than 5,000 people see all my videos. You got to remember, I've got videos, 144,000 people on view. The problem was that after the revolution, they had to sustain themselves with the plantation economy. So although they had essentially gained their freedom, so they were still back on the plantation because they had to maintain the economy. So the conditions of the people didn't change much from before the revolution. The only difference was it was the black man who was holding you at gunpoint while you were forced to work on the plantation before the revolution. The only difference was it was the black man who was holding you at gunpoint while you were forced to work on the plantation to before the revolution. The only difference was it was the black man who was holding you at gunpoint while you were forced to work on the plantation to feed an economy that was essentially dying because it made enemies out of all of these colonial powers. So the conditions of the people didn't change much from before the revolution. The only difference was it was the black man who was holding you at gunpoint while you were forced to work on the plantation to feed an economy that was essentially dying because it made enemies out of- So let me tell you something, this shit got so good. I saw this title. And when I saw this title, I had to click on this video. And when I clicked on this video, the title, when it, they decide to show it, God, I hate this robot. And this is the title, as soon as it let me control my computer. Truth Revealed, Haitian Revolution, Voodoo, and Freemasonry. So I was like, oh, yeah, this one sounds good, don't it? Uh, I got to check this out. This is how it already opens. controlled. I this is how it opens. The guy's video that he's about to present on Mike TV, right? Now I don't listen to Mike TV because he says he, I think he had one of those indigenous videos, and I just, I just, I heard a bunch of nonsense that ain't true, so I just, I can't. Again, we can't be indigenous if our base DNA is Negro. We came from somewhere else. I don't care how people feel about that. That's the truth. If you got 36 Negroes, if you got 70 Negroes that created what you are today, and you got three Indians in your lineage, one after the other, then what are you? Are you Indian or are you Negro? You three Indians versus 70 fucking I mean, three Indians versus 70 Negroes in your bloodline. What are you? You still gonna argue you're Indian? That's dumb as shit. You don't, you're not even saying, I'm a mulatto, half Indian. You're, I'm mixed. You're not even saying that! Fucking, and, and, and again, this dude, see, this is, Whose voice is this? had already controlled islands and ports. Whose voice is that? Off the coast of Africa long before 1492. On record, before 1510, less than a thousand slaves have been brought from Africa. So, again, again, when I tell you the dude's a master teacher, I'm not bullshitting. Uh, I just, it's just all okay. It's, listen, it's okay to not agree with everything. I have a wife. I don't agree with a lot of shit she says it's okay 
we can still be married. We can still produce children. We can still live in the same house. Just because you don't agree with so much of this or a little bit of this, does that mean that what you agree on is meaningless? I'm going to leave it here. Um, if you can help out, we'd really appreciate it. We're, we're in the middle of some interesting projects that it's not healthy to show on camera. We're in need of a few materials. Uh, I'm going to have to make a large purchase of fabric and then, uh, then we move forward. I don't want to make any promises because I'm not that good at keeping promises, just like a lot of people, but it's just not healthy because then somebody is wanting something that I haven't produced or cannot produce and they are not near here and can't understand what situations happen or occur. I am building something that should be built in a factory. I do not have factory money. I do not have factory materials. I do not have the money for all the materials. If you would like to help, I can put you on a special list. Everybody knows what the list is. When I have something to sell or for members, they have first access. I made plates. Four people donated greatly. Well, a lot of people donated. Four people, three people donated greatly. Four people received those plates. Me, I'm not satisfied with those plates. So I made something different. And I'm going forward with it. And there's nothing anybody can do to stop it. If you assist me, I'll put you on that list. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. Because we only have so many, so much time left. And I'm at a point where I don't need electricity to complete what I'm doing now. So if the power goes out, power goes out. Nothing anybody can do. So, so I guess I'm going to leave it there. I'm not in the mood to beg. I'm done for the day. I hope that you are practicing righteousness, moving towards justice. I would suggest these videos you start watching, uh, maybe about the demise of our people modernly, meaning uh, something happens to someone and the public is getting involved. It wouldn't hurt for us to do some internet sleuthing for some of these uh murders like the McGee situation uh, the young man found tied to a tree uh, where the officials claim he did it to himself uh, things like this these things should be examined by us because we are not experiencing justice from the, the criminal justice system what we are experiencing is oppression. Um, so from there, I, I say, you know, uh, look, I'm wrestling with myself. I didn't show everything on camera before. I'd love to show you what I made. I can't. You want to help? You'll help. Find it in your heart then it is fine. May the Most High bless your household. May your children be chosen to rebuild Jerusalem.
And we don't know how many more recordings there's going to be because we don't know how long we'll have electricity. Be safe.